Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the session of the Open Source Summit Latin America. Um, so in this talk, I want to talk about how to secure containerized applications um, with a focus on embedded Linux devices. But uh, I mean, um, most of the concepts that uh, we're going to study here also apply to, let's say, deploying containers in the cloud. Um, a little bit about myself. So my name is Sergio Prado. I'm located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been de developing embedded software um, using open source software for, for a while now. I've been working in the embedded field for 25 plus years. Um, currently, I'm working with my company, Embedded Labworks, and I do a lot of um, embedded development, mostly focused on BSP development um, uh, involving the Linux kernel, um, writing drivers, uh, developing distros with the Octo and Buildbrot and, and so on. Um, I'm also an open source contributor and I have a, a blog that sometimes I write about um, different topics, embeddedbits.org. Um, so our agenda here, we're gonna have a, a quick overview of the container technology and how that applies on embedded devices. A little bit of introduction uh, on container security, and we're gonna really try to focus on how to secure container images. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, build time security, so securing uh, container images at build time and also at runtime, of course. Um, a few disclaimers so I'm just a developer, I'm not a security engineer or a security expert. So I'm just a developer that worries about security. Um, usually security requires a kind of holistic approach. So you have to look at, not a, like in our example, we don't have to like, we're not going to only look at the container image, but like everything uh, around it, right? So we're gonna have to care about um, how you build those images, where they are stored, and everything in the middle. I mean, you have the operating system and everything. So in this talk, we're going to just cover a small part of how to secure applications based on containers, right? And uh, we're going to use Docker in the examples, but uh, most of the examples could also apply to other container engines like Podman. So very quick, because I want to focus on the security side. What is a container? A container is just a convenient way to distribute and, and ex execute software, right? So you take your application with the dependencies and then generate a kind of self-contained image that you can run that application. You just need a kernel to run it, right? And that's the only dependency. And of course, a container engine to start the application. You can have only your application there or, or even a complete operating system inside that image. For that to work, you need several resources provided by the, the kernel, like namespaces to isolate all of the resources, like networking, file systems, users, and so on. Uh, you need control groups to link the resources that a container can have during execution. Um, so with all of this support in a container engine, you can run containers in a device. And uh, why would we use containers on embedded? Well, there are several different, different of course, there are always trade-offs, right? So we're gonna have to pay a little bit to use containers. Maybe we're gonna use a little bit more resources, um, but um, we can say that we can improve productivity with uh, containers because you can focus on application development, right? Um, you can, you have support to run your application isolated from the host machine, the host environment. Uh, you have more, um, you are kind of encouraged to, to run, um, um, your applications in different containers, and then you can have a more uh, modular uh, design. Um, you have more control with uh, when running containers because you can leverage the 
container engine to uh, run the containers and then uh, limit the resources that that an application inside the container can have you might have more control over how to update the applications because applications are isolated inside the containers and updating container images is easier because you have all of the dependencies there and if you use it in the right way you can improve security also so depending on the implementation you might use more resources because you are running uh, applications with containers that could bring kind of more um, dependencies inside the images and then for example you could increase a little bit the usage of storage for example uh, but you can get all of these benefits and i mean it's not that containers are secure by default right because I would like to do a kind of quick demo here in my terminal just to show that like security is not a default option in containers. It really depends on how you design the application. So I have, so I'm, I'm a um, normal user here, right? Uh, as Prado. And uh, I'm going to show how I can access this file that only root has access, right? This, uh, a file that I created in my root file system. Only root can read this file. And I'm not root, so that's why I cannot uh, see the content of this file. But because of my user, because my user is inside the Docker group, and because Docker um, is running with the, the root user, I can just run a container with Docker and be root and access that file. So I can do something like this docker run dash it dash dash ram. Um, I can just kind of bind them out to my complete uh, root file system inside this container with the dash v option, uh, like uh, let's say root host. And then let's run the Alpine container and get a shell. So now I'm inside the Alpine container, right? I was the normal user. Now I'm inside the Alpine container with the root user. And uh, I have access because I bind mounted my um, host file system inside the container. Now I have access to my host file system because i'm the root user i can catch the secret file and see the content so that's like we can say that if you are in the docker group and if you are running docker as root and it's kind of i mean you can run docker uh in a rootless mode but currently um it's kind of an experimental feature um so most of the deployments still runs docker as root and if you are running docker as root and if you are a user in the docker group you can be root <laughs> so that's really not secure right uh, just as an example on why like running applications inside containers you are not secure by default and the idea here is to uh, talk a little bit about how you can secure um, applications run inside containers and again um, there are a lot of things that you will need to care about in terms of security right when you are thinking about um, improving the security so you have the build environment that you have to care about uh, and you have to secure the build environment all of these are kind of uh, surface attacks uh, the container registry that's where you store the container images and also the devices including the operating system right that will run your containers so this talk is really read really about how to protect the images we're not going to discuss how to protect the registries and the build environment and our focus is here um, and uh, there are two important concepts here 
that you're going to try to try to leverage in the presentation right the economy of mechanism that's a very important uh, security concept um, and we should really try to keep the design as simple as possible um, because with a simple design the, the attack surface is decreased and that means the security is improved the other concept important concept is the least privilege so you should really run the applications with the least set of privileges needed for the application to run so um i'm gonna have lots of comments here in the presentation and you could really try to run on your machine those comments if you want like just copy and paste from the slides that's going to be available in the events website and uh, i'm gonna use this example in the in the in the comments like a very small c application that um that will just open uh, an rtc file and then it's going to execute an io control um, operation to get the current date and time very very simple the idea is to try to containerize this application and run it in the uh, secure way let's see how it goes um, so I divided this presentation in two parts. The first part is securing the image, and the second part securing to the uh, securing the application at runtime. So the first part is securing at build time, how to build um, a more secure container image, and then the second part how to run that image in a secure way. So that's how we're going to do it. There is a lot of content in this presentation, so I might like go fast some parts because um i'm, I'm gonna try to keep the schedule the 40 minute schedule so um of course later you can read the slides and, and get more information from the from the presentation so let's talk about securing the container image um i defined in here five kind of mitigation techniques to improve the security of the container image at build time. So first, create a minimal image, as minimal as possible to run the application. Second, um, try to, to only run images that you trust. So let's talk about this. Uh, third, how to um, make sure that your application is secure. So running a static analysis tool could be a good choice here. And fourth, and run um, security scanning tools in the images there are a few tools that can help uh, to improve the security of content images or docker images and last um, try to make the solution the container images easily updatable that's very important because i mean in the end software will have bugs and you're gonna need some kind of uh, way to update the the images after a while so let's start with the the first mitigation technique create a, a minimal container image and that's very important right because i mean if you create a container image with a based on a debian or i don't know ubuntu or any other linux distribution you're gonna have a very big image with lots of things that you don't need and that might be like you might have several different kind of attack vectors inside this like bugs in software that could be exploited just because you have that software in the image so the idea here is really to try to come up with a minimal image with only the dependencies that you need to run the application right. and for that there are a few strategies like try to use minimal images that is, for example, the Alpine image that's very small. Google has a project called Distroless with really minimal images um, for specific use cases. Uh, using a mood stage build also is a good approach uh, because you don't mix like the build environment with the runtime environment. Uh, maybe linking your application statically or even building your application with a build system like Yocto because you can build containers with the Octor or Buildwood and have really a minimal image to run your application inside a container. Here I have a few um, comments 
that I, I just want to show. And again, you can just try to run this on your machine and see how it goes and play with it. So here we have um, a small Docker file. I'm gonna go over, like explain what a Docker file is. And, but uh, for those who don't know, a Docker file is a file that describes how, how to build uh, um, a Docker image. And uh, here we can see that we are using Debian um, Bullseye for the base image. Then we are installing the, the tool chain and copying uh, the source code of the application, uh, running GCC to compile the application, and then uh, configuring the application as the default application to run for this container. And then you can just build this application with Docker build. You can see. The size of the application that's important, 25, uh, 250, 100 megabytes of, 250 megabytes of RAM, of, of size, sorry. Uh, so a very big, uh, I mean, a very big uh, container image to run just a small C application, right? Of course it works, um, but it's a very, I mean, it's, you don't need all of these, right? You don't need a Debian image to run this application. So what you could do, like in the second approach here, I'm doing two different things. First, I'm I'm, um, I'm basing on Alpine for the application. So so instead of using Debian, I'm using Alpine. That small container image, like it uses Busybox and um, Muzzle, Muzzle as the LDC, so it's very small. And uh, the other thing that I'm doing here is I'm doing a multi-stage build. So this is the first stage where I just build the application. And in the second stage, I create a container with that application without the tool chain, the container, right? And the, the end result, it's a smaller image. Like it was 250 megabytes, now it's five megabytes much smaller right of course it still works but we had less things in the image it's better in terms of security let's improve that like we could just take our image and build from scratch and and uh, uh statically link the application and then you have really really small container image with only the application statically linked with the dependencies that's another approach right and um, here we can see like I'm still building the application with uh, Alpine, but I'm statically linking the application. And then to create the final container image, I'm using this scratch image as a base. That's a basic, uh, an empty image. And in the end, uh, we have uh, a container image with just like 100 kilobytes in the size. So very, very small with only the application and its dependencies. All right, so that's one kind of mitigation technique, right? Reduce the size of the image. Another one would be to, to try to only run applications inside containers using container images that you trust. So if we look at our previous example, like we are using a tag to reference a version of the container. And the problem with using tags is that tags are mutable objects. They can change, right? So let's say uh, an attack, an attacker is able to have access to the Alpine repository and just um, change the tag to another container image. And you would not know that, right? And you would pull that image without knowing that you are pulling an image that was, I don't know, uh, change it by an attacker. So better than running um, basing on containers using tags, you can use a hash. A hash is an immutable object, right? You can just um, use a hash instead of a tag and build your containers with that. You can trust a hash a digest because it's an immutable object. Another thing that you could do is to just 
um, sign and check the signatures of your images. There are a few uh, tools for that. For example, Docker. Docker has a, a, a framework or a tool for that called Docker Content Trust that you could use to sign and check the signature of your images. So what has changed here? I imbued the container with a hash. So this is more secure than a tag because a, a hash, a digest is an immutable object. I'm really sure that I'm really building from the image. So every time I build this container, I'm going to build the same container because hash, the hash will not change. We will always point the same container image. Um, of course, everything works and nothing is changed in terms of runtime. Only the build time of the container has changed. Uh, we could also run our containers, right, uh, with a digest. For example, here I'm not doing that. In this example, I'm running the final container using my tag. I could trust my tag, or if I don't trust my home tag, I could use also a digest, right? Run my container. That's another thing that I could do. And uh, the last thing that I could do is to just sign the image. So I could, Docker has, and again, we are talking about Docker here. If you are not using Docker, you're gonna probably have to search for other solutions for this. So Docker has a command called a trust that you could use to create the keys, just as I'm doing here. Uh, Docker trust key generates, is going to generate a, a, a private public key pair that you could use to sign our container images. And I, could, I can push the public key to a, to a registry, and then I could just sign my image with that. So here I have like, I have the container on my machine, then I'm removing this container uh, image, then I'm enabling the Docker content trust. And now uh, when I'm trying to run this container, I cannot run anymore because it is because I enabled the content trust and it is not signed. If I build it again and push to a registry, the image will be signed because I enabled content trust and then I can run the container. So that's another approach, right? To make sure that you are really running your container image because you are tracking the signature and only you, right? You, um, at least that's the expectation, right? You have the private key to check the signature and you can make sure that you're really running the, the container that you signed it. Another approach, approach and this is gen, really generic, right? Um, it's not as specific to, to containers, but running and static analysis tool is a good approach to, to improve the security of any application, including applications running inside containers. So the idea here would be, as a, another step when building the container, just run the static analysis tool. So here I'm running CPP check on the source file. And if it fails, you should not build the container image, right? There are several security scanning tools that we could use to improve the security of the container image. So for example, this one, uh, call it Trivi. This one is from Aqua Security. A very nice tool, you just give the container image at rest, it doesn't need to be running. Uh, and it's going to scan the image and show like the security holes or the vulnerabilities in the image. It has a nice kind of uh, output with a table, with all of the software that you have inside that image and the version of the software and the known vulnerabilities. And then you could just like remove something that you feel you should not have in the image. Integrating those image, those tools in a, in a CI environment could be a, a good approach. This one I'm using gripe to scan the images, kind of the same output. Let's see. Um, try to come up with a solution to make it easier to update the container image. That's very important because in the end, you're gonna have um, problems in software, software have bugs and you have to fix those bugs. So 
and it's important to to have some kind of a mechanism to update the container images. There are kind of complete distributions that provide these out of the box, right? We have Balena, we have uh, Linux micro platform from Foundry.io, we have Horizon Core from Tradex, CoreOS from Fedora, and so on. Um, in the end, you're going to have to find a solution if you are designing a, an operating system and running your applications inside the containers. Second part of this presentation. So now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk about how to secure the execution of a container image, right? And there are several different mitigations techniques for that. Let's go over all of this. Uh, first one: restrict container privilege. So so far in this presentation, I've been running the container with uh, these parameters, and this is very bad, right? Um, so here I'm by mounting the complete slash dev directory inside the container so i have access to all devices inside the container and i'm running in privileged mode and i'm gonna we're gonna talk about what that means running in privileged mode but i'm basically with those two options i'm basically root inside the container i can do everything that i want inside the container uh, it's, i'm kind of almost the same thing as the root using the host os so that is not good. Um, just as an example, right? I'm running the same. I'm running the container with the same parameters. Um, if I start uh, uh, a shell inside this container, I can see that I'm root. Um, I can see the complete slash dev directory with everything that I have in my host operating system. I can just mount my uh, HootFS partition from the from my host operating system, I, and I have completely access to the root file system of my host OS. So there is no security there, right? We need to to improve that. So the first thing, um, remove this privileged flag. This privileged flag it was created so you could run like Docker inside Docker, especially in a CI environment. But we should really avoid this flag when um, when running container images in production, because it enables all capabilities. We're going to talk about that. Enable access to all device files in slash dev. It basically disable like YAML or, or SC Linux if you are using it. So, yeah, you are kind of root inside the, the container with this privileged flag. Um, so, how can we run the container without those two flags? If we think about it, what our application needs is just access to the slash dev slash RTC uh, file. And uh, we don't need um, any, like everything else inside the slash dev, only this specific file. Uh, by default, we don't have access to those files, right? Because Docker use a um, uh, kind of feature called cgroup files to prevent a user from accessing device files inside the container. And there is a, a flag in Docker called a device that you can use to enable access to a specific device file. Uh, with this flag, Docker will bind mount the file inside the container and also create a cgroup rule so you can have access to this file. So we can remove that, those two flags and just use this one, slash slash device and um, the device that we want. And that's it. We have access to the device. You, we can read it, call it IO Chrome control and run the application. So we are really like applying here that concept of least privilege. We only need access to the RTC file. So we're going to only map this file to the container. Another thing that we could do to try to improve the security of, our, of, of the container is to run without root. Because by default, if Docker, the Docker daemon is running as root, when we start a container, you are root inside the container. Um, and to run a container without being the root user, you can do, you can build your container with this user instruction or use the user option when running the container. 
And, and if you do that, like I'm doing here in this um, example, so here I'm running as root without any uh, special parameter. I can see with the ID command that I'm root. And I can run the application. Now, if I give like this dash, uh, dash, dash user parameter, like I'm here, I'm trying to run with uh, 2000 user. I can see that inside a container, I mean the user with the ID 2000. I cannot run ping, for example, because I'm not root. But I cannot also uh, access the, the device file because I'm not root. Uh, so that doesn't solve our problem. Another approach, but I mean, if you don't need to be root, you should do that, right? Run without a you know, root user. Um, if you need to be root inside a container, another approach that you could try is to use a user namespace. The idea of a user namespace is to um, to really um, separate, right, isolate the users uh, from the hosts and from the container. This is a kind of feature that you can use and the Docker engines are able to use that. And the idea here is to just create a range of user and group IDs um, in the host OS that would map to the container that is running. So here in this example, uh, they use 100,000. Um, here I'm creating a range of users starting from 100,000 and uh, into this, this number here. And like inside the container, user ID zero would be outside the container, this user ID. Inside the container, uh, user ID one would be outside the container, user ID 100,001. And that's the point here. So you can just configure the Docker with that and run the container. And that's very nice because like when you run the container with the user namespace enabled, you can see that like you are running as root, right? Um, you can even like do execute root operations like a ping usually uh, requires a, a root capability. Um, but you can really confirm that you are not you, a root user because when you try to run the application, you cannot run it because the application requires access to the root user, right? The application needs to access this device file that uh, in the host OS, only the root user has access to it. The root user from the host OS, not the root user inside the container that is mapped to another user inside the container. So that confirms that namespace is really working. And I mean, in the end, it doesn't solve our problem. One way to solve this issue here would be to create a group and use UDEV in the host OS to um, change the, uh, set a group in this file so like let's say let's create an rtc group and set this file with the rtc group so users inside the rtc group could access this file that could be one approach here um, let's say you need to run containers with the root user another approach that you could take to improve the security is dropping capabilities so capabilities are concept a very old concept on, on linux in the a very long, long time ago, um, we had a kind of binary decision to define what kind of privileges a process has. So you have everything or you have nothing, right? Uh, process running with the uh, ID zero have all of the privileges and process run without being zero, user ID zero, and no privileges at all. And then on Linux 2.2, I mean, long, long time ago, the capabilities feature were created. And the idea here is really to divide the privileges and in the kind of uh, distinct units called capabilities. So let's say you have an application that needs to set up networking, but doesn't need to do credential management. Uh, you can do that, right? Dropping capabilities that you don't need when running as root. So that's the main, the main idea here. And, usually docker um, container engines are able to to make it easier for you to configure that right so in docker you can use this option cap drop 
to NCAP add to drop and add capabilities. So if you take this to our implementation, right? If I'm run the container without this option, I can see that I have lots of capabilities that really I don't need. If I run the container with, without any capabilities, cap drop all, I still can run the application. So my application doesn't need any capabilities, right? It doesn't, it just needs to open that file and write to it. Another mitigation technique to improve the security of container images restricting syscall. So the kernel Linux has kind of 30, um, 30 hundred plus system calls. You're gonna not probably going to use all of the, those system calls. So if you limit the system calls that you can access, you're gonna improve the security of the application. And there is a kind of feature called second that you could use for that, right? Docker kind of uses that by default. Um, and you could improve, like, change the Docker default configuration and, I mean, limit uh, what an application can do, right? So here I have a kind of um, um, a second profile that I created. Not everything here because it doesn't fit the slides, but um, I created the second profile based on Docker, second profile that is on GitHub. This is the link here. Um, and um, if I run with the second profile, the application works. And if I go to the second profile and remove the IO control system call, the application doesn't run anymore. So with that, we can make sure that kind of second is working, right? Preventing. And then, of course, you could take this profile and remove what you feel don't need in the application. Um, to identify all of the system calls that you need to do, you could do use tools like S-Trace for that. Another approach to improve the security of uh, container images is uh, managing the resources of uh, allocated to containers. And that will prevent, that will not prevent those kind of privilege escalation problems, but will prevent the issues. Uh, related to denial of service attacks. Let's say you have a small device with a container running, running a web server. An attacker could kind of uh, send uh, thousands and thousands of re uh, HTTP requests to this small device and could just break the device, right? Like the device could run out of memory because the container is allocating lots of memory to run lots of threads to, to try to answer all of those requests. So if you limit the, the, the the resources available to, to container images, you're gonna improve the security of the container. And for that, there is a feature in the Linux kernel called control groups that you can use. And Docker has several parameters that use control groups to limit access to resources. Like this example here. Here I'm running the container as usual without any parameter. And we can see that the container has kind of access to all of my memory, right? And if I limit, the resources, now the container will only see that. And, and with this, we improve the security of the solution. Another approach to improve the security of container images is using um, Linux security models like ST Linux and, uh, and uh, API Armor. So those security models, it's a kind of uh, extra checks um, um, in terms of uh, what an application can do, right? We have the normal checks, like if the application can, uh, if the application running as user X can access this file and things like this, and the Linux security models will be on top of this doing more checks on what an application can do in the system. Um, usually Docker is deployed with API Armor enabled, and we can see that like running um, Docker info. And uh, the idea here is that you would create a, a, a profile for a security model. And at least in all my opinion, App Armor is simpler than ST Linux. And that's why here I'm showing an example with uh, App Armor. So here I have an App Armor profile just to show like how can you control access to resources using App Armor. So here in this profile, I'm configuring uh, the app. This is a binary, my binary, my application 
I can execute this app and I can read this file and I cannot do anything else. So I'm really limiting here what an application can do, even an application running as root. You're not able like to do anything else in the system. Only uh, run this application and exit this file. And of course, it runs, the application run with this configuration. Now, if I like, in this second example, I'm removing this line. So now the application cannot access the RTC file. And if I try to run with this profile, I can see that it works. The access to the RTC file is denied. So that's another mitigation technique to improve the security of a container image at, at runtime. I'm finishing the presentation here, so just a few more, more slides. Um, security networking is very important if your container, uh, if the applications that you're gonna run inside the container, they, if they have some kind of network connection, Right. For example, when you run containers by default, Docker will create a default bridge connecting all of the, con the containers that, that is running in the same host in this bridge. So that means if an attacker is able to exploit a container and this container is connected to the same bridge of another container, this attacker could try, try to, to get to the other container. Um, so, if you really don't want like to have like this connection between containers with using a default network bridge, you should really create your uh, a, a, a specific network for a container that can be done in Docker with the Docker network create command. Other things that we do, like try to not share the network with the host, right? That's important thing. Try to not share the, the Docker's um, Unix domain socket with the with the with the container. Uh, if we have to provide some kind of connectivity with a with a container image, try to use TLS secure connections. So those are kind of uh, some approaches that we could take to improve the security of. Um, network communications in containers. In terms of storage, uh, one good approach is to mount the file system read-only. So we prevent any kind of writes in the root file system. That should really be immutable. That's a good approach. Try to develop container images that are immutable. You should really not try to be right into the, to the file system. And this flag would prevent that, right? If you really want some kind of uh, 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 temporary file system to store temporary files or things like this, you could mine, mount a TMPFS uh, directory inside the container. And uh, for persistent storage, uh, you could use a, a volume, a Docker volume, for example, or you could bind mount a directory from your container. And if you care about what you are storing, right, in terms of privacy, or if you have like storing secrets or things like this, you're gonna probably need to think about encryption. But that's kind of out of scope here. So yeah, we we are closing here. Um, I in this presentation I try to come up with different mitigation techniques that could be applied to to try to write more secure container applications. Right. So we start with, with uh, a very secure way of running a container image. It works, but it's very insecure. You could do lots of stuff with this with this command. Um, and, and here in the comment below, we have a, a really more secure way to run the container, right? Because we are only limiting the application to access the specific file that it needs. The file system is really only, so no access to the, the, the file system inside the container will be allowed. You could create a, like in this example, a slash run directory to store uh, temporary files to run the application. That's kind of not required for this specific application, but it is here just as an example. 
You can drop all capa root capabilities, right? Especially if you're running the application as root and just enable the ones that you need. Uh, you can um, drop all privileges. This will prevent, like if you are running the application with a normal user, this will prevent the, the, this user to run in set user UID applications. You can have a, a custom second profile with only the system calls that you need. You can have a custom API armor profile limiting what the application can do. You can run in your own network, limiting the resources, CPU, memory. And the application does work, but it's more secure. So I hope this presentation was useful. Hope you enjoy it. Feel free, feel free to reach me uh, on LinkedIn or uh, Twitter. Just connect uh, and yeah, let me know uh, if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed this talk and until next time, bye-bye.